Welcome to a Legendarium special about Merneith, the first woman pharaoh of ancient Egypt. In this episode, we will learn about the first woman known to have held power over a great kingdom. Around the year 3150 BC, the settlements of the Nile River Valley came under the rule of ancient Egypt's first dynasty. These monarchs overpowered the other strongmen who fought for the ultimate prize, the kingship of Egypt. Relatively little is known about the fourth king of this dynasty named Dejet, who took the throne around the year 3000 BC. To keep power and wealth with in the dynasty, King Dejet married his own sister Merneith, a common practice in ancient Egypt. Originally, Merneith served in the royal harem, where kings begat many children, sometimes as many as 100. Merneith's name means the beloved Neith, which refers to a protector goddess worshipped in the western Nile Delta. Appropriately, this goddess served as a vicious protector of kingship and the royal line. However, King Dejet lived only 10 years after taking the throne before death retired him from politics. Dejet left behind unfinished business with many boys who might take the throne and anxious elites hoping to sort out the rest. While King Dejet had a son named Den, Den remained a child, so his sister wife, Queen Merneith, took the throne. The death of a first dynasty king remained a time fraught with doubt, worry, and the looming specter of civil war. To show the power of the Egyptian monarchy and terrorize powerful families into silence, Queen Merneith ordered the sacrifice of young and healthy men and women from Egypt's elite families. The royal family laid 269 dead outside the four walls of her brother-husband's tomb. Another 318 spent eternity in the trenches around the actual tomb of King Dejet. Most disturbing, Merneith buried many of the young women with their children. This culling allowed Merneith to remove anyone who might challenge her son's right to rule. Though this is horrifying to modern eyes, it is worth remembering that such a mass sacrifice spared Egypt civil war. And so that everyone would know who carried out this epic slaughter, Merneith engraved stone vessels with her name and titles in Dejet's tomb at Saqqara. Exercising a dark and terrifying power on behalf of her son, Merneith then lived a pampered and luxurious life at court, yet she gave thought to the next world, building an underground burial chamber for herself in the sands of southern Egypt. Her workers lined it with mud bricks, creating plastered and whitewashed walls. She stuffed the tomb with grave goods she would need in the next world, like pottery vessels filled with beer, wine, olive oils, perfumed unguents, honey, and food. Showing great courtesy, Merneith even gave her sacrificial victims the honor of a room of their own in her burial complex. About 120 men and women went to the next world within her funeral enclosure, another culling of Egypt's ruling class. This culling is notably smaller compared to the one she did for her brother-husband. This might partly be out of mercy to spare Egypt a heavier toll in blood and tears, yet it could also be a sign that the original calling worked and there was far less resistance to Den taking the throne. Merneith's tomb also included a solar boat, which would ferry her along the Milky Way to the northern imperishable stars, where the souls of kings dwelled. This is an extraordinary feat for a queen regent who only took power to ensure the ascent of her son Den. And upon the death of Merneith, Den took up the crook and flail. He lived until 2940 BC, ruling Egypt on his own for 42 years and enlarging the kingdom through military conquests in Sinai and Western Asia. 
Den would become Merneath's greatest legacy. During his reign, the Egyptians built temple complexes and elaborate tombs while trade flourished. The cult of Apis, the bull deity who delivered prophecies through the miracle of walking through a door, first appeared during Den's reign. He is considered the greatest king of the First Dynasty, but would have never taken the throne without his mother's help. Like so many other Egyptian royal women who stepped into positions of great power, Merneith worked within a man's world. As such, she tended to act prudently, portraying herself as a caretaker who served when no man could be found. At least five other women would assume a similar role in ancient Egypt, some even taking the title of king. The most famous of them would be the final ruler of an independent Egypt, Queen Cleopatra. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.